income tax 2023-2024. Social security number SSN. Get ready and some coffee because we need to know a lot of information to do income tax preparation 2023-2024. Most of this information can be found in the line instructions of form 1040 instructions tax year 2023 which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov irs.gov social security number or SSN. So obviously the IRS sees us as a number. We got to have the right number in order to properly file the tax return, noting that oftentimes the tax returns are filed electronically these days. So we're going to need that social security number matching up properly with the name so that we can make sure and be able to process the returns on that electronic format. Otherwise, it might get kicked back to us and we're going to have some workarounds on what we're going to do from that point, possibly fixing the name and or social security number, possibly having to file if we can't in some other way, such as by paper, for example. So an incorrect or missing SSN, otherwise known as social security number, can increase your tax, reduce your refund or de delay your refund which are all, of course, not good results to be having here. So we don't want to confuse the IRS. This is the general rule. Don't confuse the IRS. You're just going to get into a bureaucratic uh, boondoggle and it's going to cause problems. Keep it simple. Make it, make it easy for the IRS to get things done over there. So to apply for an SSN, Social Security number, you're going to fill out form SS5 and return it along with the appropriate evidence documents uh, to the Social Security Administration. So note, we're talking about two federal agencies, but don't make the mistake thinking that all government entities are in essence the same. If you are going to the Social Security Administration, that's not the same thing as going to the IRS. You want to keep the agencies straight. The Social Security number, you're typically dealing with the Social Security Administration, SSA. They communicate with the IRS in that that's the number that's going to be recognized when you file uh, the tax return. So then the SSA, the Social Security Administration, assigns the name and the number, which then should be recognized on, by the IRS when you file the tax returns. But if there's a problem with that number, you don't go to the IRS typically, you're going to have to go to the Social Security Administration. First, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP. You see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. So you get a uh, form SS5 online at ssa.gov forward slash forms forward slash ss5.pdf from your local SSA office or by calling the SSA at and there's a number here, 800-772-1213, that you can take a look at. 
So obviously you might visit the Social Security Administration website. If you have an office there, you can go to the office and you might contact them by phone if necessary. So it usually takes about two weeks to get an SSN once the SSA has all the evidence and information that it needs. So check that both the name and social security number on form 1040 or 1040 SR, W2 and 1099 agree with your social security card. In other words, when we file the tax return, you, oftentimes we're going to electronically file it. So we have to have the, so, the number needs to match the name that we're processing. Now note, if you use software, you will often be paying, paying for the software possibly by return. If that's the case, then it's usually the social security number that triggers the cost of using the software. So you, that's another reason you don't want to have to change the social security number because that's going to cause a problem in terms of the fee for the software possibly. So you want to get the social security number in there properly the first time, match it up properly to the name. Then when you file the tax return, then the IRS should be able to recognize it with hopefully the e-file. If not, it might kick it back. Now also then the forms that we get will typically be processed according to our social security number, such as our W-2 forms and our 1099s, for example, these forms being forms that the IRS basically forced the person that gave us income in some way to, to kind of rat us out to the IRS, right? To give these forms to the IRS. So the IRS has the W-2s, in other words, and the 1099s. They're going to assume that the W-2s and the 1099 income should be reported on the tax return related to the social security numbers on the W-2s and 1099s. If you file income differently from what's on the W-2 or 1099s, it's going to cause you a problem typically because the IRS might question that uh, because they have the documentation of the W-2s and the 1099s. Therefore, if you have an issue with the wrong social security number on these income document forms, you might want to then contact the person who issued the document, employee or the employer or whoever was the contractor so that they can get those adjusted on their end. So the IRS has the proper information, which will then match up to the tax return that you'll be generating. Okay. So if they don't, certain deductions and credits on form 1040 or 1040 SR may be reduced or disallowed, and you may not receive credit for your social security earnings. Uh, so obviously the other issue is that your income that you, that you get, if you have schedule C type of income, uh, then there, you also might have the social security taxes in the form of, of self-employment tax. Or if you have uh, W-2 income, then you might have withholdings for uh, Social Security. So the thing with Social Security is that you're paying into the Social Security system, which is almost being thought of as like a government kind of a, a retirement program these days, meaning the more you put into it, the more you should get out of it when you retire. Uh, I wouldn't depend on that, but that's the idea. And so, so you want to make sure that you have the proper uh, information so that the money that you paid into it's going to give you a benefit when you take it out, which means they have to have the proper social security number that your earnings and withholdings for social security have been tied to, noting that social security is different than income taxes, but we kind of verify them at a similar time sometimes, right? Because they're both on the W-2 form with payroll taxes. So if your form W-2 shows an increase, uh, an incorrect SSN, social security number or name, notify your employer or the form issuing agent as soon as possible to make sure your earnings are credited to your social security card record. So in other words, if there's a problem with the W-2, you would think, oh, I'm going to, I can go to the IRS and fix that. I'll just tell them that my W-2 is wrong. But the IRS is probably going to say, hey, look, we would like you to fix that with the employer. You have to go to the employer to reissue or fix, update the W-2 to properly record it because they're the ones that are not only giving it to the IRS, but also to the Social Security Administration to make sure that you have the proper withholdings and are allocated the withholdings to the Social Security. So you have to go to the issuer of the form typically, uh, which sometimes is a pain because you might have quit that job or you don't want to talk to them anymore or anything like that. But that's where you that's where you 
you know you would typically need to go if you can't go there then you might have to take some other action but that's what you would want to do so if the same uh, name or social security on your social security card is incorrect you can call the ssa so that you could also call the social security administration so once you are issued an ssn social security number use it to file your tax return use your social security number to file your tax return even if your social security number does not authorize employment or if you have been issued an ssn social security number that authorizes employment and you lose your employment authorization an i-10 will not be issued to you once you have been issued an ssn so if you receive your ssn social security number after previously using an i-10 stop using your i-10 so if you don't have a social security number you might have an i-10 so they're going to recognize you with an i-10 but once you get the social security number basically you're not generally going to go back to using the i-10 once you have the social security number you would then use the social security number so irs individual taxpayer identification number otherwise known as the i-10s for aliens so so aliens from the united states right so if you are a non-resident or resident alien and you don't have and aren't eligible to get an ssn social security number you must apply for an i-10 now again if you're a tax preparer this might be a, a realm of specialization again right because because it's going to be a little bit more you're going to have different issues when you're talking with aliens and different statuses there and that could be something that you want to specialize in or it might be something that you don't want to specialize in because you're not you don't, you don't feel as comfortable in that particular area one of the issues of course being the social security number so that they can they can uh, be identified and be able uh, to work now part of the problems with uh with working in the united states when you're not a citizen is this whole issue with the social security because because then the question is well should they be paying to social security because they might not be getting a benefit from social security if they're not if they're not a citizen at the time of retirement and so on and so forth and it gets all messy so it takes about seven weeks to get an i-10 so if you already have an i-10 enter it uh whenever your social security number requested on your tax return so if you have an i-10 without this but not a social security number then this the i-10 kind of acts as your identification number as opposed to the social security number so your i-10s must be renewed so if you haven't used your i-10 on a federal tax return at least once for tax years 2020 2021 or 2022 it has expired and must be renewed if you need to file a federal tax return so the i-10s are not you know permanent and therefore you, you have to keep them up to date so you can properly keep in compliance with the tax code and so on so you don't need to renew your i-10 if you don't need to file a federal tax return uh, you can find more information at irs.gov forward slash i-10 tip i-10s assigned before 2013 have expired and must be renewed if you need to file a tax return if you previously submitted a renewal application and it was approved, you do not need to renew again unless you haven't used your I-10 on a federal tax return at least once for tax years 2020, 2021, or 2022. An I-10 is for tax use only. So it doesn't entitle you to social security benefits or uh, change your employment or immigration status under US law. So obviously if someone is here as an alien you know they're not a citizen then uh, they, they want to work here and be productive and so on usually the you have to have a social security number to do that so that you can be in compliance with the tax code and have the social security withholdings which is now kind of part of our federal you know kind of retirement program kind of system so if you don't have that then you're going to have to be assigned you know the temporary number the i-10 which is basically used for identification uh for tax purposes right that's to just for that that purpose basically only so once again an i-10 is for tax use only it doesn't entitle you to social security benefits meaning social security benefits are when you have payroll tax withholdings withdrawn from the wages and then uh and then at retirement you're going to get that money back now obviously as a u.s citizen most people would rather not pay into social security and just save for your own retirement would probably be the safer way to go uh so <laughs> so that would be i wish i could opt out opt for that option but it is what it is
So, so or change your employment or immigration status under uh, U.S. law. So for more information on ITINs, including application ex expiration and renewal, you can see Form W-7 and its instructions. So if you receive an SSN after previously using an ITIN, stop using your ITIN. So you get an SSN, then that's it. You don't use the ITIN anymore. Use your SSN instead. Visit a local IRS office or write a letter to the IRS explaining that you now have an SSN, Social Security Number, and want all your tax records combined under your SSN, Social Security Number. Details about what to include with the letter and where to, to mail it are at irs.gov forward slash ITIN. Non-resident alien spouse. Uh, if your spouse is a non-resident alien, your spouse must have either a social security number or an I-10 if you file a joint return. Your spouse is filing a, a separate return. So you're married, you think you'd file a joint return in, under normal circumstances, but now your spouse is a non-resident alien, so you still need the, that identification then, either a social security number or an I-10 typically. Pres presidential Election Campaign Fund. This fund helps pay for presidential election campaigns. The fund reduces candidates' dependence on large contributions from individuals and groups and places candidates on an equal financial footing in the general election. The fund also helps pay for uh, pediatric uh, medical research. So if you want $3 to go to this fund, check the box. If you are filing a joint return, your spouse can also have $3 go to the fund. If you check a box, your tax or refund won't change. So you could check that question sometimes comes up on, on checking the box or not. So you can kind of explain that box.